What's up guys? It's Mike with Shallow Reefing coming back at you with another video and today I'm dealing with some STN right now on my nice bonsai coral that is not doing well at all. I've taken some frags off of it and this is just like this is a showpiece colony like let's be real. It's a really nice colony on this rock and I have no idea what could be causing this STN to happen. So I've kind of decided that I'm going to remove it from the tank and put it in the frag tank. Now my goal is to hit it heavy with amino acids because I can't really get the dropper in all the way down to you know start putting amino acids directly on it but with the frag tank underneath the tank I'm going to be able to just drop it right on it. It's going to be just above the just below the water surface and it should be getting plenty of amino acids and just really focus heavy on that. Um, one of the things that could go on, I don't know, I mean, there's a mushroom kind of stuck to the side. I don't know, it's not really like, it's just isolated to that one side. The other side is not doing too bad, but again, don't really know what's going on. It hasn't been looking good for a while. I've been testing my parameters, everything looks good. I'm gonna do another test today and see it, but then I'm gonna move it down to the sump with the new frag tank and see if that works. And I'm also gonna do a coral dip on it. So I'm probably gonna hit it with some um, Coral RX and some Brightwell MD and see if that does anything to it. And the dip begins. So I put in some Coral RX and I am going to be turkey basting just to make sure that I get everything around it, make sure that everything is good. Don't want anything to, uh, you know, still be attached to this because I'm gonna do a double dip and then do the Coral MD from Brightwell. Now, you can kind of see, this is, quite a, this is quite a large bucket. Now that is one of those little peppermint buckets you can buy all those little peppermints out of. And that is a very large bucket size comparison. You got the, 16 ounces of uh, whipped cream bucket there. This is definitely way bigger. Um, I also have a little, uh, my frag kit, my first frag kit, which is actually like a, a manicure kit where you got like your different things to get under your nails and you know, push back cuticles here and tweezers and scissors and a brush. So that was like my first frag kit that I did a DIY on back in like 2012 it's you know done its time it's been put through its paces all rusted out and stuff but you know what can you expect i've used this thing forever i don't think these were rated for salt water so i'm gonna do is once i get it out of this dip here i'm going to remove the mushroom which is on the bottom side so this right here is you know the only way i could fit it in to get most almost all the coral in there so i will remove that mushroom because i don't really think it's the mushroom man i don't know what it could be but once I get that removed, I will do a, another dip and then I will be done dipping and I will put it in my new frag tank. That looks like crap because I need to clean the glass. So one thing that's kind of apparent to me now is when I check the water parameters, I am noticing there is a creep in the uh, alkalinity and the calcium level. And it was doing 90 milliliters of alkalinity and 110 of calcium, so I reduced it by 10 each. Because you know that giant monopora colony is completely gone. And I also sold a bunch of frags, so it definitely has influenced the parameters quite a bit. So hopefully if I back it down, plus I'm taking out a ton of water to do all these dips, I think the calcium alkalinity will be in a solid position. Oh buddy, I did not clean that sump out, did I? Oh, just kicked up all the detritus in there. Even after I already, you know, kind of cleaned it out. But luckily, I mean look at that surface agitation, this is crazy. I have a bunch of filter floss going over the baffle. Hopefully it catches it. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, let's see, hopefully it catches it. Who knows? This will be an experiment. And it's about time to switch the dip. Now, before I switch the dip, you can kind of see a little bit of those strands in there, a little bit of mucus. I don't know if that is, you know, a good thing or a bad thing when you're dipping this coral, but you can kind of see 
There is some stuff sloughing off. Don't think it's too bad. Hopefully this will help. Oh wow, there were way more coral, or not corals, there were way more mushrooms than I thought. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten mushrooms? And they are getting close to this. I don't know if it's the reason for that, but who knows? Can't hurt to take them off. Time to do some surgery. Dip number two, safely on the way. You know, agitating all the stuff, mixing it all up. And oh my god, those mushrooms. I should have videoed it, but that was a pain in the butt. I kind of only smushed the little guys around and might have ripped them off. But the big one came off. The other guys, no. Oh, well, might be SOL on that. Oh look, still got some of those Asterina starfish down there. Come on. Okay, knocking them off. So, hopefully two dips in this. We'll get those little starfish off. They're definitely not the cause of this ST inning. But, this should be able to allow me to isolate it in the sump. It's clearing up a little bit now. You kind of see little particles. And then, eh, it's catching some stuff. And then, place it right here and drop a ton of... Uh, the polyp booster for the amino acids and just target that hard turn off the pump let it sit and then i'll have like a little controlled environment where i won't have to worry about the upper part of the tank all right got nine more minutes on this also pro tip if you ever do have a colony that's stning or rtning whatever take frags of it so this is a about the third or fourth frag i've taken off the colony so I'll always have a backup, and the other backups are doing great in the frag tank, so it's just the main colony. You know, you never really know what could cause it. I could speculate that it was a couple times where my calcium did dip, and I do notice some adverse impact from when my calcium does dip. It did get below 400 uh, for, I don't know, it was about three weeks where it kept dipping below 400. I kept dosing, dosing, kept up in the dosage. I'm pretty sure it's because I couldn't really keep up with the demand on that stupid uh, Monopora. And now that it's out, you saw my levels just shot through the roof. I'm thinking it could be instability with levels. And the number one way to get everything back to a good place is to get them stabilized. So now that they're up too high, I've reduced them down and reduced the dosing. And I've taken a bunch of water out with all the, you know, uh, dips that I'm doing. So that should lower some of my calcium alkalinity levels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this uh, real heavy with a bunch of aminos and some sea chem fuel and hopefully everything works out for this coral. We'll see. But it's always good to have a backup. Alright, so I further tested my water. and As you can see, nitrates, you know, with the salivary test kit is between 5 and 10. About right where I want it to be. No big deal. My Alkalinity has kind of jumped up because I took out all those corals and sold them. So I've reduced my alkalinity uh, dosing to this. Again, you remember how I said my calcium pump. I mean, I don't know what is going on. It's just, it's dosing about, you know, 9 milliliters when it needs to be dosing 10. So I just up it so it's about at 90 milliliters of calcium a day. My tank is always, like, uptaked, uptake, uptook calcium way more than it has alkalinity. Um, so one of the things I noticed was my phosphates, I tested my phosphates, it was over 0.9. So previously it was 0 0.04, so my phosphates have jumped up tremendously, and that's because I've been doing tons of feeding on my tank to get the growth going for my corals, and my chato is now offline. So what I did was, well, I diluted it by half, and it's still over 2 parts per million, which is pretty high. So what I did was put phosphate in the system, GFO, and updated and added more carbon. So I think that could be one of the things. My phosphate's getting too high. Um, could have caused, um, they could have slowly crept up because the last time my phosphates were tested wasn't in, was back in December, like December 1st. So they probably slowly crept up because I was dosing a bunch of, um, well, I was feeding my tank like crazy in that time. So it took me about three months to get here. So I think it's going to take a month or so to get out of it. So my frog spawn is an indicator coral of what happens with high phosphates. And as you can see, 
the skeletal tissues were super, super flimsy and weak. And when it tried to make more heads, they kind of grew out in the waves uh, of the power heads, just kind of sloughed them off and they kind of just drooped down there. Now the rest of it's pretty fine, but this is definitely an indicator coral that my phosphates were way too high. All right guys, so I'm gonna post a picture and I'm gonna do about four or five pictures and each one represents a week from the Garf Bonsai. So when I put it into the sump, I put it in there and started hitting it heavily with amino acids. I also started reducing my feeding on my corals up in the display tank because I think I was overfeeding with uh, my fish and with reef chili. Um, that caused a phosphate spike and as you saw previously, the phosphate spike caused the corals to not have a good calcium carbonate structure to throw down and that caused them to have weaker skeletal structures. Now, you can see in these pictures that it took a while for my coral to start like coloring back up. So this Garf Bonsai, you see in the first couple pictures, it's very slow to, slow to uh, you know, have any change and then all of a sudden after a couple weeks, you started seeing the coral brighten up and it started to actually grow back a little bit of the tissue that it had lost. Now, this was only over a month. Granted, it probably took me about a month and a half, two months to get to the point where I was like, okay, I need to do something. So, you know, if it gets you two months to get there, it's probably going to take you two to four months to get out of that situation. So, I have taken the coral from the bottom and placed it up into the top display tank now because I'm comfortable that it's going to start on a good trend and I've gotten my phosphates under control with using... Uh, GFO and lighter feeding techniques to get it back. Now on this last picture you'll see uh, a top and bottom shot of the corals. So with the top shot, the top shot is actually how it is today and the bottom shot was where it started off about a month ago. And you can see definite improvement. So what my recommendations for anyone who does have STN on their corals is to check your parameters, make sure you don't have high phosphates, get your phosphates under control, and then uh, you can do that by reducing feeding and using GFO, your uh, CHATO, algae, rea or algae reactor, anything like that. But I would suggest doing all those uh, techniques and get your phosphates under control and then start feeding, spot feeding, not just broadcast feeding, but actual spot feeding amino acids and that will be easier for the coral to take up and to help it to uh, color back up and start calcifying again. All right, guys, this has been Mike with Shadow Reefing. If you like what you see here and you want to see more, click right here to see more. Don't forget to comment below and let me know how you like the content. As always, I'll see you next time.